now let's look at uh, some of the key characteristics that are associated with the term structure model first of all it is any model that we are developing the short term interest rate model or long term interest rate model any model that we are developing as a term structure model it has to be arbitrage free right and uh, when i say it has to be arbitrage free the model whatever that we are designing it should be able to identify any kind of arbitrage opportunity and it should be exploitable any strategy that is generated any strategy that is uh, generated uh, uh, that that can identify the arbitrage opportunities and exploit them so basically uh, the model that we are designing for arriving at the interest rates or uh, or uh, for modeling the interest rates it should be completely arbitrage free then a very common requirement the interest rate that generally come out of the model should be more positive because very rarely we see negative interest rates in the market because any kind of uh, mechanism which is to do with the negative interest rates is as good like i deposit something instead of uh, me getting an interest from the bank in turn i may have to int pay interest to the bank for depositing some money with the bank which cannot exist uh, in reality uh, for a long term it could be a very short term kind of a scenario very much uh, for a very limited period of time if at all exists it will exist because it's as good as a person who has saved the money with the bank if it is said that he has to pay money for maintaining the money with the bank rather than getting any interest in return he would rather pull out that money and keep it uh, under his bed without trying to deposit that uh, with the bank so in real world such a kind of situation is very very difficult to arrive but of course some models that are there in the market will uh, talk about uh, a few models uh, later on the typical wasisek model it uh, allows the typical interest rates to be negative but what we really need to understand is what is the chance or what is the probability that a particular uh, interest rate in a particular model can go negative and if at all it can go negative what is the kind of impact that it can create what is the kind of magnitude that it can go up to but in general any model that is designed if at all i am talking about a good interest rate model it should compute the interest rates as positive then the interest rates should exhibit a mean reverting kind of behavior which means if the interest rates are higher right now they have to come back to uh, a long term mean reverting level if they are lower they have to go back to a long term mean reverting level so in some cases that mean reverting level could be very very slow and if it is much slower it may not uh, help for modeling of uh, the short term interest rate but where the applications are involved where uh, P, where the investments are typically for a longer term this mean reverting behavior should typically uh, help in terms of better modeling then whatever the interest rates that are coming out that interest rate should be able to price the bonds or derivatives or any such kind of financial instrument which are based on those interest rates the pricing of them should be simple without any kind of complexities involved because at any point in time the model which people are using for doing the pricing of the instrument it should not take too much of a time to typically compute the output 
So reasonable amount of time the output needs to be produced, reasonable amount of cost the output needs to be produced. So the, the computability, the effectiveness in terms of producing the prices for the bonds as well as the various derivative instruments is very much essential. I should be able to calibrate the model to the current market data. I, can, I should be able to apply the current market data and try to uh, current market interest rates and try to replicate the current prices for the various uh, bonds and derivative securities. So very easy to kind of test the model for the effectiveness. And any model that is being designed, the output should be more and more realistic in nature. So I should be able to replicate what has been seen in the past with a good amount of probability. The replication to what has been seen in the past should happen with a good amount of probability. And at the same time, it should be able to give me an upward sloping, the level sloping, downward sloping in different kinds of scenarios. So that's one more expectation. And uh, the parameters, whatever the model is typically uh, uh, give, uh, using, it should be able to fit the historical data quite appropriately. The historical, the past values should be modeled quite comfortably and that is when I can use it for modeling for the future interest rates. And uh, almost good range of uh, derivative contracts should be modeled quite comfortably with the interest rates that are typically being derived. Because if the model cannot fit the current situation, probably I may not be able to rely on it heavily for, for, for predicting the futuristic scenarios. That's one of the essential uh, stuff or some of the essential uh, features or characteristics that are uh, expected out of uh, any interest rate model that has been devised or designed for predicting the short term or medium term or long term interest rates, right?